So here's the thing, sometimes we start a venture or an exciting project only to find that the excitement dies down after a little while. It becomes a mundane work. The process is no longer exciting. The thing that you used to stay up all night working now just feels really draining and you just lack the energy for it. You're making the money but you are overworked and not in that exciting way. So how are you supposed to balance the hard work and consistency of working while you continue to enjoy the process? I've got two tips for you today. Hi, if you're new, welcome. My name is Dereka Delbridge and I'm an occupational psychologist. And today I've got two tips that I welcome you to consider if this is a situation you're going through. If you're a regular one here, you will know that I'm in a different environment today and excuse if you hear the bird's noise and everything else that might be going on, bear with me. So the first tip is to take into consideration the season that your project or business may be in. And what I mean is that where about is the project? Is it just in the ideas phase? Are you in the experimentation phase? Are you solidifying the idea? Or are you about putting systems and automations in, in space? Because that will matter in what you need to do in order to adjust. So I'll use myself as an example. I'm not new to business, but my membership, the Baobab Experience, is a new venture for me. And right now I have just finished the experimentation stage. If you know, I enrolled last month new founding members, and now we are ready to relaunch again in July 22nd. And by this time I've already done the experimentation. I'm actually in the process of putting structures and systems in place. So at this stage, it has been a long work. You get to a point where the excitement of the idea <laughs> has phased away by now, and you are in a place where you are starting to feel like you could easily start doing something else. So for me at this stage, it's really to figure out what can I pare down, what can I structure, and make this process as easy as possible. And the reason I do that is because I'm creating room and space to add more personal projects. Because the journey can be really long, depending on how long you took to experiment. And for me, it was a long process of finding a fit that made sense. It means you can get to a place where if you don't inject activities that induce curiosity, that thing we feel as creatives where we wake up and we just can't wait to investigate more, it can become pretty mundane. So for me, that has meant coming away with, with my kids. It's a working trip, but it's also just a time that I can enjoy with my family. And I get to explore new areas. I get to record B-roll for YouTube so you may start seeing me using more of my own personal b-roll in my videos and that is a new excitement and a new thing that I've not done before. For example, I have not recorded videos in public walking around using my, <laughs> my camera. So that would be an interesting one for me. And it's a challenge, right? It's a thing that drives us when we feel like we are challenged and we are starting something new. So that is what this um, experiment is for me. And that's what this project injects for me while I'm still working on my membership, putting the structures in place, preparing for you guys as you're coming in in July but is to make sure that I'm not just drying up and losing interest in my life because there's everything is so familiar and uh, mundane so in the Baobab experience I use a framework that actually guides the members to know where they are and the activities they need to pay attention to at that time and then you adapt the activities according to the phase of your project that you are in or phase of your business that you are in to make sure that you maintain the process to be exciting for you. Let me know if you can relate to getting to a place where excitement dies down and you are starting to wonder and take on new projects. The second tip is examine your motivation. And this is a really key one because what I usually advocate for in my work, you would have heard me always signing off with focus on being than doing is that in order to make changes, real changes in the doing process, we need to focus more in the being process and really examining the motivation is that part of the journey. So here's the thing, focusing on your goals and having motivation for your goals is not a bad thing. In fact, past research has shown that focusing on your future goals is an important predictor of well-being and positive functioning, but it's also possible to spend too much emphasis on future goals because on the flip side, Research has also shown excessive focusing on future goals actually leads to workaholism, 
neglecting family and friends, not taking time for occasional self-indulgence or self-care, and not having time for hobbies or activities that actually really fuel your creativity. So let me know down below if you've been in a point in life where work was just taking over, there was no room for anything else. So here's why focusing too much excessively in future goals can have the opposite effect to what you actually want. Because what happens is you start treating your present moment as just means to an end. And that hinders your ability to really enjoy the present moment, which can then cultivate even more creativity and innovation in your work and your business. And other research has actually found that when we are that excessively focused on future goals, we can actually achieve the opposite of what we want in the sense of we don't actually reach the goal that we are actually focusing on. And more research has actually found that striving for goals can actually have counterproductive results. It can paradoxically lead to the unlikelihood of actually achieving that desired goal. A phenomenon known as ironic process of control and this was coined by Wegener in 1994. So you may be wondering what are we supposed to do? Are we not supposed to be focusing on our goals and aiming to reach our goals? That's not what I'm saying. The thing is once you know what your goals are, you know where you're going, you don't need to be excessively making sure every week you are hitting every target, right? That can, can become really excessive because it takes your attention away from being in the present moment and actually looking at how your life is evolving. The hows of how that can happen can be revealed in you paying more attention to the present moment. So a better way that I can propose for you to do instead is to make sure that you're monitoring the progress that you're making because research has actually found that successful goal achievement is greatly dependent on your ability to monitor progress towards achieving that goal. This is why in the Baobab experience, I've actually developed what is called the Baobab growth model. It's to enable my members to monitor what they are doing and how they're progressing as they're going through their journey. This is so key because monitoring progress improves persistence and performance. But most people really struggle to monitor themselves and see how they're progressing through the process. And sometimes this could be due to the fact that the goals may be too vague or they're having difficult measuring the progress they're making. The goal may be unrealistic at times. And sometimes it could be as simple as not integrating the goal into your life. So over time, it doesn't get to become a habit and it gets forgotten or left behind. And this is where, for my members, the Baobab journey framework comes in to help them have a clear sight of where they're going, what they're supposed to do at each stage, and how to monitor that progress as it's happening. Does that make sense? I hope those two tips were really helpful. Choose one. Don't try to implement too many goals or things that you're monitoring at the same time. Choose one and focus on that and see if you can tweak that one thing and how it can help you. And not just make money, but enjoy the process of running your business and being a creative entrepreneur. And if you have found this video helpful, make sure you give it a like and share it in the communities that you frequent in to help and support them too. And just remember that the Baobab experience is opening its doors again July 22nd through to July 25th. So if you've been considering joining or you heard me talk about it last month and you missed that, I know there's some people who actually contacted me after the doors closed, make sure you jump on the waiting list. I'll put the list down below so that you don't miss it. And I'll send you an email to let you know when those doors open up again so you can join and be in an environment that can support your journey in a wholesome way, in a way that's sustainable for your business long term. We don't focus on these tactical strategies that are too minutes in and then over time it falls away it doesn't become a habit for your life we reverse engineer when we know what actions we need to do in our business we go backwards to focus on what the internal work that needs to happen to make that available for us and that brings forth results that are sustainable long term for you and your business so go live a life fully lived that is my motto for this year and I've actually created merchandise for those who of you who are making that commitment you will notice now there is a shelf on on my channel and there's a store for you to grab items that declare that commitment of you living a life fully lived so go do that and remember focus on being than doing and I'll see you in the next one